Hello everyone, my name is Zachary David John Dunn, and today my granddad would have turned 100. Now unfortunately I didn't get to know him, he passed away when I was only three years old, but fortunately for me, he had eight kids, one of them being my mom, and um, yeah, this year I wanted to kind of get to know him for his 100th birthday, so I sat down with my five aunts, two uncles, and my mom to get to know his life story, to get to know his you know, interests and, and most importantly, what kind of man he was. So here is me interviewing my aunts and uncles and my mom. And here is the story of John Lionel Williams. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> you ready to be on camera? <laughs> Come in. Yeah. You want to business? Yeah, why not? Sounds good. <laughs> We've been together 50 years, so it's, oh my gosh. he knows him as much as I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do a couple edits on them. So so I'll pull up the questions and we'll, we'll get started here. <laughs> Looking at the camera, you say your full name. I don't have any glasses on. Look at the hair. <laughs> What's some hair? Hair looks great. <laughs> Hey, too bad. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. You looking good? <laughs> Mom, you're the last interview. <laughs> so yeah, basically how we started is just your full name, and birthday, and then your birthday, and then where you were born. Where you were born, and then uh, like your birthday. Full name, birthday, and birthday, and then where you were born. And then where you were born. Is, um, yeah, obviously your full name, your birthday, and when you were born. Well, I'm Gillian Louise Fall now. I was born Gillian Louise Williams, and I'm the fourth daughter of my mom and dad, and uh, I have three older sisters and two younger and two younger brothers. I My birthday is September 21st, 1953, which makes me now, it's 2021, I'm 67. Don't I look marvelous? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, Sandra Ann Pemberton. I was born January 24, 52, and it was Hornchurch, Essex, England, but I was only there about a year, and then we moved to Harrod Hill, Rumford, Essex, and that's where we all grew up until Mum came to Canada. My name is Anthony Williams. I was born May 30, 1960, in Wensbury Road, in a bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. I wasn't born in a hospital. Really? You know, I was born in the bedroom. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, okay. My name is Andrew Williams. Andrew John Williams, because my dad's middle name, right? My dad's name is my middle name. Got it. And I was born in England, 1954, at Howard Wood, Romford, Essex. Uh, my name is Janice Elizabeth Reich. My maiden name was Williams. My second, first marriage was Lowther, L-O-W-T-H-E-R, but now I'm married to Peter. My birthday is December the 1st, 1949. I was born in Hornchurch, Essex, England. My name is Theresa Alice Williams. My birthday is September 7th, 1948. And I was born in Hornchurch, Essex, in England. My name is Patricia Williams Bella. I was born April the 11th, 1956. And what was the other one? Where you were born. Oh, where I was born. Yeah. I was born at Howard Hill, Romford, Essex, in England. Uh, well, I'm Lisa Jane Dunn, and John Williams' eighth child, which I'm his sixth daughter. And my birthday was August 4th, 1967. And we came, I was born in Hornchurch, Essex, in England. And when did you come over to, to Canada? I uh, immigrated April 6, 1970. I 1970. was 60. 16. <laughs> I was 16. And you guys we, came separately? Yeah, we came November 14, 74. 1974. Yeah, Dad and Teresa, 70. Mum, the rest of them, uh, 71. And then we came in 74. And then, because you came over to uh, to Canada quite young, I my would, mom was only a couple of years old. Yeah, I was nine, uh, just before my 10th birthday. About six weeks before my 10th birthday. And uh, when did you come over to Canada? I know you guys The first time I came to Canada with my parents was 1969 for a holiday. 
And then my dad decided when we got back from the holidays that he wanted to come to Canada and live and bring the kids to a, a better place. And so next year we did. We emigrated and came over. My dad and I came over in, in uh, February 26, 1970. I came in 70, July 73. And we came here April 6, 1970. I was only two and a half years old. Yeah. What was the ultimate decision for, for uh, Granddad and Nanny to come over here? Was it just opportunities or what, did you know at that time? Over, well, they came over for a holiday the year before, the first time they've ever actually gone on a big trip. And um, the oldest ones and us were actually looking after the little ones. Your mom was one of them. And yeah. She was a, you know, a baby. <laughs> and then when they came back, they said they wanted to immigrate. And we were not very happy about that because we thought it was just a holiday. But it yeah. was, my dad thought, granddad thought it would be a good opportunity for a better life for, for all of us. Yeah. And it certainly did pan out that way when I, when I look at it now. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it was just a big adjustment for most of us, that's all. The little guys it weren't so bad. Yeah. Lisa was only two, right? And Anthony, 10. They just went back to school. But for the rest of us, the teenagers, it was hard. And we left two sisters at home, which was hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when well, Auntie Teresa and, and Granddad came first. Believe it or not, it was just, uh, it was a really? fifth in February. They came in February. I think it was just recently. February 26 would have been their anniversary. They came by themselves. Auntie Teresa was 22 and granddad. Yeah. And left us back with mum, uh, nanny. And then uh, we immigrated on April 6. And when uh, in that six weeks, he had to come over, find a job and get a place. And oh, I know. Gosh. So, and apparently he did. And when we arrived, we he had a three bedroom apartment in Mississauga. And um, just more questions about kind of granddad. So. How would you kind of describe him, you know, his personality traits, like how is he as a, as a person? Good. Very kind, very gentle and humble, yeah. I would say. I don't ever remember him getting really angry or cross at me anyway, or, or the children. He seemed to be very calm. He was very friendly, actually, very kind mm -hmm. and um, help anyone, wouldn't he? Yeah, he yeah when Steve and I first met, uh, Actually, Stephen phoned him because he got in a car accident and uh -huh. Dad came out in the middle of the night to help him, right, mm -hmm. to do that. So, yeah, and you didn't really know him that well then, did you? So, no, and he was very fair, yeah. He was the most laid-back person. That's probably where I get it from. Yeah. Yeah. Not a care in the world, just whatever. You know, I mean, if you crossed him, then he, then he didn't like it. But you, you don't cross. You can't cross a person like that, but especially when they're, when they're so giving and, and stuff like that, right? I mean... You know, I uh, if we did something wrong, I don't, I, I don't remember ever him he, uh, raising his voice to me ever. I just don't remember. Oh, he, was, he was happy all the time. He, he, you know what? He never, never got mad, never got upset. Just always tried to help everybody all the time to do whatever they can. Like he's, he had his own personal in his head. He's really laid back. He didn't really speak much. Tell you the truth, he didn't. Very, yeah. very friendly person. Very helpful. What kind of man was he? Um, it was everybody's person, really. He had a good personality. He was always there to help you. Great, great dad. If you had any problem, you, you know, just he'll help you no matter what. It doesn't matter who it was, right? He helped us top all the time. Very quiet, mellow, um, serious man, I would say. But. Um, Granddad or dad was a very patient man, very kind, and he loved to laugh. He had a good sense of humor. He's always smiling. Uh, yeah, I don't know. He, he was just very patient and uh, very calm, calm person. It took him a lot to get mad, and you never really saw him mad or yell or scream, but you knew when he was serious, right? He, he seemed to be um, somebody very reliable, I would say. Yeah. And I know some of the things I kind of mentioned about, like he would he would do anything for anybody and, would take, you know. So Nanny said he would give you his last cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Not yeah. Not shirt on his back, but his last cigarette. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I love that. What was his favorite thing to do? I know when he when he came over here, he uh, he tried to like hockey and watch hockey with, with my mom. I know that. But what was his favorite thing to do? I would say fishing. Was it fishing? Okay. He loved to go fishing at Heart Lake. Oh, yeah. And he was there all the time, and he used to just lived in Brampton. He used to drive up there and even go by himself, right? And that, so that was one of these little passions. Also, 
the second would be playing the piano. I loved to play the piano when piano. we were kids. Yeah. yeah. He played every Sunday morning. And his other love was music too, yeah. right? He played the piano. Oh, he uh, played the piano, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And we had a little stereo down in the basement. And, you know, you know, Dad was home and the music was blurring. My, oh, mom, yeah. used to, my mom used to call my name. You turn that down, Andy! <laughs> and it was Dad. He was getting me in trouble. I didn't do anything. You know? And I said, come on, Mom. It's not me. It's Dad. Oh, like bloody John. She didn't say nothing to him, though. <laughs> you know? He used to love playing the piano. He used to like to entertain it. Yeah. And sing, like, you know. His favorite thing to do was to fix things. Like, he was the neighborhood family fixer. If a washing machine broke, it would be there. If a kid's chain came off a bike, it would be fixed. Yeah. Very handy, right? Yeah, Everyone's very handy. handy, yeah. And the best part, I used to love uh, when he used to play the piano. I used to love listening to the piano. I used to love it every Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> Auntie Jill said that he would play the piano and, and you guys oh, would sing. and. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to look after his our cars on Saturdays was like a normal routine of checking the oil and the windshield washer and making sure the cars were clean and uh, always wanted to make sure that we were safe and you know we just wanted to keep up with the maintenance um, he apparently according to my mom which is nanny yeah he learned to play in the army like really he never learned as a kid they uh, according to her and he learned to play in the army and he never read music he didn't know how to read notes he just played by ear. Wow. And, and I remember that as a kid. We used to have lots of sing-alongs at uh, birthdays and Christmas time. And he would, um, and apparently he played twice a week in a pub. Yeah. And he got paid for that. Wow. So he used to entertain and sing all the old pub songs. That's awesome. So I would say fishing and playing the piano. Great piano player. And, and that's what how a lot of us all used to learn to sing. Yeah. Sat standing all around the piano. And we learned all the old English pub songs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can <laughs> so imagine. We, yeah, we were maybe not so great, but he was, yeah, but we learned a lot of the old songs. And uh, and then sometimes us girls and all that, unfortunately, um, I most probably had the worst voice, but, um, <laughs> but uh, we couldn't really sing. And that was unfortunate, really, mm -hmm. that we didn't. But we still danced and uh, always put on shows for grandparents, mm -hmm. right? I've got a picture of his grandparents right there. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I love the piano. But later on, he loved to fish, too. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. photos of uh, even my dad and, and yeah. going and up to the trailer. Yeah, and he loved that too. But I remember when one of his birthdays, I bought a piano uh, from a neighbor down the street, and I was pushing it up the along the curb and pushing it into the into the house. So when Dad came home, he had a piano to play. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't. Uh, and he used to play at the pubs all the time in England. Don't forget, eh? he mm -hmm. used to every time we're going for work, he used to go over to the pub and he get free drinks because people would buy him a, a pint of beer so he could play the piano. There that's the only way he gets because he had we you know we weren't filthy not, not lots of money my dad earned every penny every time he went he had to put a lot of money out too to keep us guys all going right picture actually he like well i i know he used to like i see him working on the cars on the engines and stuff like any fiddly stuff any any machine like that even a lawnmower he used to like fiddle around doing i don't know why but <laughs> okay. that's what i remember anyway that's what I remember. He was pretty handy, I've heard, too, right? Yeah, he's a handyman. Yeah, yeah. he was a little handyman. Yeah. Awesome. He, what was your uh, funniest or maybe favorite childhood memory with, with him, just like kind of growing up? Was there, like you said, trips going on, something like that? Or? One of my favorites I remember was when we all went down to, I think it was Devon in, in, uh, in Cornwall, and he took us all out mackerel fishing. But really? <laughs> boat and we all went mackerel fishing. And, uh, it was our vacations, I think, mm -hmm. that were always uh, um, my f with my dad. You know, he was always willing to pack up and pack up. It was, uh, and we called it the Yellow Submarine, right? Mm -hmm. Our van. And my dad said, "Oh, you gotta like fishing." I guess he was giving me the hint to like fishing, you know. And that was when I was fourteen. We did camping. Yeah. Yeah, I think the best one when we were to Yarmouth. I guess the only one I can remember is when. Nanny and Granddad used to come over on Sundays. Daddy always used to go over and pick them up. And we always, my dad used to go get on the piano and he used to say, okay, girls, let's give Nanny and Granddad a sing song. We used to go camping, I guess. It used to be fun going camping. That must have been, that must have been fun with, uh, oh, with all of you. Of all of us in the back seat of the van, 
Yeah. And um, we used to go down, up and down the hills, and we used to look in the mirror, and we used to see an like, old pile of cars behind us, because my dad used to go slow, <laughs> like a big snake. <laughs> <laughs> but we used to have fun. I did. We yeah. used to have fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and the big, the big submarine, like the big van yeah, that you guys yeah. used to have? Oh, yeah. The yellow van, yeah. The big submarine, yeah. We used to sing that song for the Beatles. That used to be fun. Oh, I it used to be it. really fun. Yeah. Awesome. I went trout fishing with him a lot when I was little. On okay. every, every Sunday was kind of our thing to do. Yeah, and just camping and, and things like that. But I always remember that and, you know, to take all us kids out fishing, you know, a lot of, and girls. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of that too. But that was a very fond memory on camping. And, he, and I remember one year we camped at a farm in a farmer's field. He actually asked the farmer if we could camp on his field. Uh, I don't know. It was on a still, farmer's field? Yeah, it was cheaper, right? You probably didn't have to pay. And I remember we all got a tour of the, um, it was a milking cow farm. Yeah. And they gave us a big tour of all how they milked the cows and all that. And Dad took us everywhere. And and I was, one funny memory for that too was when he pitched the tent. I guess maybe it was late at night. It was on a bit of a slope. And in the morning, all of us were halfway out the tent. <laughs> because we were slid down and our feet were outside the tent. But he oh, had yeah. a huge army tent that was all the kids. Yeah. And then they, Nanny and Granddad, would have a separate tent for them. And made usually a baby. Oh, yeah. But, um, yeah. But uh, that was one of my favorite. And I always remember that. And you'll probably get all your aunties to sing this song. He got a big yellow Thames van. Oh, yeah. And that was the same thing. It was a big van, empty kind of cute van. And we used to have planks right along each. And we used to sit across from each other and all the stuff would be inside. And when we used to go on holidays, we all used to sing, we all live in a yellow Thames van, like the Beatles We song. all live, live in, in a, a yellow, yellow Thames, Thames van, <laughs> yellow Thames van. Um, and then we used to have a, a like a yellow van, but he took all the seats out. So we'd have the long benches, old camping. Yeah, so we used to go camping and sometimes we'd be basically camping anywhere. The only time I ever remember is mum used to put the boys in one tent and us, the girls, in another, and then mum and dad was in the other. Yeah. Um, the only time I remember is, uh, was really funny, was one morning we woke up and the cows were licking our feet. <laughs> really? Because you were on a farm. We're on a farm yeah. and we'd all slid forward and that was the <laughs> only We went camping, like on a farm. But we even went to the to the farmers and they checked out where the eggs are and they, really yeah so you we went see, to like, the cows the yeah we went to the cows and see the calves and they fed up let us feed them and everything um we went to Glen Haffey conservation area which was in Brampton like Clear Hill nice and uh I don't know we always went there together we granddad used worms and corn <laughs> Because Blasted. we used to go to these trout ponds yeah. where everybody used to fish and we used to spend the whole whole day there. And sometimes we did catch catfish, which he never capped. Yeah. He would say, he would ask to take it home and they'd say, oh yeah, we'll yeah. take it home. And they would tell us, oh, it's so good to eat. Like you should try yeah. it. But heard it's nice. Yeah, but Nanny, I mean, he never brought it home to Nanny, but Nanny was very good. He never cleaned them. Mm -hmm. Nanny always took care of the fish and we had fresh trout. But I remember there was about 17, 18, I think I just finished high school. My dad took me up to the trailer. He wanted some help around the trailer. Well, what's the trailer? Okay, whatever. So we go up there. Son, we're going to go fishing. Okay, well, okay. I, I knew what it was about. You know, what time are we getting up? Four, four o'clock? Are we getting up to go fishing? <laughs> and, and being a imagine. teenager, and I thought, oh, oh my yeah. God. Four, oh, and being so, okay, he's not going to get up that early. No way. Sure enough, quarter after three, you hear the tea cows. So we had to get up. That was the alarm clock. Right. You know, so I'm getting up at 10 to 4, and he's just, Anthony, come on, let's go. Oh, oh, come on, you up? Are you up? Tea's ready. You know, 10 to 4 in the morning. I think I don't want tea, anyways, but uh, I pushed through it, and, you know, and then uh, I think the time I settled down was about 6 o'clock, and he kept on shaking me because I'm sure I was dozing off. Well, watch the red and white ball in there. and <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, I see it dozing off and he's shrugging my shoulders. Yeah. He's giggling because he knows I'm bleeding tired, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, but I think by eleven o'clock, you know, I'm sure I must have dozed off and snored a few times because you know, because he's so patient, just sitting there waiting. Oh yeah. Waiting for the water, so calm. And I'm looking at to me, it's a time to go to sleep. You know, like it's well, oh, it's calm. You go to sleep. 
And then he, and he, oh, you got one. I jumped up and I almost fell off the bleak boat and he started laughing. <laughs> you know, and he was having the best time of his life. He didn't care about what he was catching. He was looking at me, teasing, teasing the crap out of me. Exactly. You know, so I think we bent back in, uh, I think about 12 or 1 o'clock. And then he says, oh, we're going we're gonna to go out again. I said, no, no, I'll cut the grass. You know, you, you go out. <laughs> Off we'd go to the vacation, but I can remember you wanted us to swim. We had to learn to swim. I can remember <laughs> going to the beach, and it's usually cold, and you've got the wind blankets up and everything. <laughs> and he insisted that we go out there, and he would always hold us by how we called them costumes back then, as bathing suits. And uh, and he would hold the back skim of it, and he would water. skim across and make us <laughs> swim around freezing water. You yeah. Know? And uh, what what did Granddad do for a job? I guess uh, after well, uh, I got the, the army. He came out, and believe it or not, you remember the door to door salespeople? And yeah. That it was very common back then. Cause yeah. No one had cars. Nobody drove anywhere really, apart from the odd couple that had a car. Mm -hmm. And um, but he sold brushes. Oh yeah, really? And the, and the main one he sold was the chubby brush. Okay. And and you know what that was used for? No. It was to bang your carpets outside. Oh really? That's how you clean. Yeah. Yeah. Get all the dust yeah, and the dirt that's out. That's right. So you'd hang them out and you'd. Bang. I didn't know that. And chubby brush. It, yeah, and it was the chubby brush, and uh, that was the highest thing there. Do you uh, remember? I'll, I'll back up to England if you want me to. Yeah, um, definitely. Like he he was in the army, right? Yeah. Uh, right. He was like called up so right from school where he was in the army at 18 and he was he's pretty well he was stationed in Europe and Africa and then uh, he ended up as a, uh, getting up through the ranks of sergeant and he was a paratrooper wow so uh, but he was in the war from nearly the beginning to the end right which is like September 39 to September 45 and so when he first came out, I, I did ask Nanny, what did he what did he do for first for a job but he used to work for a company called Betterware and it was selling household stuff, cans and door-to-door -door salesmen. No way. Yeah, so, but she said he didn't do that very long because he was waiting for a permit. I'm not sure what she meant by a permit um, to get uh, into the print, which is the newspaper. Yeah. And he, she said he worked for the sketch. Okay. So that was actually, he got, got that job and he, and he worked there right and pretty much until we immigrated. Wow. Yeah, so he was like, um, she kind of said that he was the guy that bundled up all the papers, tied and piled them up, and they did it overnight, right? And then so they all went out in the morning. But I think he also had a second job. I think he worked kind of two jobs with the Daily Mirror, but Nanny couldn't quite remember. But I kind of remember them working for that company too. I think when he had eight kids, I think he had to work two jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, he used to have the phone, fax machines, and all, like, way back. Or I'm going way, way, way back. But he used to be all like stationary stuff and he used to fix anything that got broken as a mecha little mechanic thing so yeah he did a lot of work there it was good but he enjoyed it yeah but i did that for a few summers and then it closed down yeah and that was kind of tough for him right so because you know an older guy like that what was he like 50 something where are you gonna get another job yeah it was tough for him to do that right yeah. he tried everything though he wouldn't give up though that's the one thing Never gave up. Would well, you want to know how you met Nanny? I was. That's another one of my questions. Yeah, how did they meet? <laughs> I, I was saying to Kimmy, I said all I remember is the dance hall. Yeah. They met at a dance hall. I wasn't sure if, if it, it was going to be in Romford. I'm not really sure, but I think they were at a dance. I think I'm not sure. I was told it was a dance club. I don't know if he. They met at a dance. And Can you believe it? They. He, he went by himself to a dance hall in Ilford, it was called Palais, and on the same day, night, Nanny decided to get dressed up and go dancing herself, and she went on her own too. We went to the Palais, mm -hmm. and that was in Ilford, Yeah. and uh, at the dance, as you said before, that was very popular to dance, that was our big social back then, to mm -hmm. meet people. That's where they met, he took her for a drink, and she never drunk before. Yeah. So, I forget what her drink was. I think it was gin, I think oh, really? gin and tonic, or something like that. I forget yeah. what she had. But anyway, they were married three weeks later really? because Dad was just out the army and yeah. uh, looking and, uh, and <laughs> yeah. three so, weeks. All right, let's mom, get married. Yeah, Mum was out of the land army. Your mom and, grabbing uh, quick. Yeah, yeah, he's a good yeah. one. <laughs> and so they were married, and she borrowed the dress and put things together. And, wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So they. So you guys did the video. I, I actually got a chance to watch the 50th wedding we anniversary did, the other yeah. the whole thing went, way through. So that was 97, I think. 97, or, yeah, because they were so married in 19, 19, December 6, 1947. Wow. Yeah. 
Yeah. And that's when they were married. It was um, um, Auntie Barbara and um, a cousin there. Wow. I'll think of her name in a minute. I was going to say, so, um, like, Nanny also had a, a, a large family as yes, well. She so did. she had. Yes. I, I don't know all, yeah. all the names. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I'll remember. Go, yeah. It's um, I can quite, I, I can try, and I didn't think to do that. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, but Dad only had the the four. Mm -hmm. He had um, a sister, um, aunt, my aunt Doris. Uh, she was a school teacher, and was quite smart. And um, my uncle Brian, his younger brother, mm -hmm. that was quite a years, few years apart. Me and like me and Lisa really, mm -hmm. and uh, Auntie Joan. Auntie Joan, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's awesome. And there's the one there. Wow, I love seeing these these old photos. They're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you think about it, in '47, that's quite something, isn't it? Really. Even to have, I guess, yeah. a handful of photos done now, like it's so yeah. easy with yeah. everything digital, right? But it was a big deal yeah. to get them printed it's out and. Seventeen. Yeah, and yeah. This is the marriage certificate you use. Wow, you actually have it. <laughs> I saw it in the video, but it was, um, yeah. wow, this is amazing. <laughs> so Alice Louise Allen, and that was her nanny's maiden, full name, maiden name, maiden name. Yes. and then is it John Lionel, Lionel Williams, he's, wow. Yeah, his father's name was the same. Yeah. And William Frederick Allen was mum's dad's name, but... That's, it's nice because they do the full names there, don't yeah. they? Yeah. And just kind of moving on to like his military uh, background. I know he did, he did serve. Do you know too much about that? Yeah. Kind of he what he never, did? Yeah. never, ever brought that up. Yeah. That's one thing he didn't bring up at all because I don't think he obviously wanted to go to, go to war and all that kind of stuff. And then a lot of people didn't talk. Uncle Ted talked about it, but my dad, never, hmm. never, never. And he never. I never even asked him because I don't want to ask him. He might upset him, so I didn't want to say nothing, right? So. But if he wanted to tell me, I think he would have. Yeah, for sure. But apparently uh, he was a well-known guy in the army, that's for sure. For some reason, I don't know what it was, but I guess he was just a military-bound guy when he was in there. He did his job, but it's what he's supposed to do, it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But Uncle Ted actually put my dad on this pedestal, too. He couldn't believe what he was like, so it was good. Yeah. He was in the army, right? Yeah. Uh, right, he was like called up so right from school where he was in the army at 18 and he was he's pretty well he was stationed in Europe and Africa and then uh, he ended up as a, uh, getting up through the ranks of sergeant and he was a paratrooper wow so uh, but he was in the war from nearly the beginning to the end right which is like September 39 to September 45 mm -hmm. um, all I knew is he was a paratrooper in the army I'm not really sure what else uh, he used to do because Granddad never really talked about it to me or that I remember when we were little. Um, all I know is that he used to say he lost a lot of good friends, so he didn't really talk about the army. I don't know if he really talked about it at all with the other kids, but that's all we really knew about that. Yeah. Um, he was 18 in the October. The war started in June of 39, so he's 18. He got drafted. He was in there for seven years, one year after yeah. the war ended. And his, one of his jobs was, uh, a dict um, he told me that he used to drop bombs down with parachutes and he used to uh, find them mm -hmm. and uh, destroy them or he wore his squadron, whatever. I don't think his squadron, because he was only young, like 19, 20. Mm -hmm. So he used to report them and they used to destroy them. Wow. And he did tell me of a story when they had gliders and he was the, worked in the ambulance and he was in gliders and went after the battle wow. to help the wounded in, in gliders. And, uh, and then one story I do remember, it was in Africa, they had tents, they set up, I don't know, probably 60, 70 tents. And these tents were big, they were like 40 by 40. There weren't no small tents, right? And they had two guards, and he was responsible, and they walk up and pace the thing. And they said, time the guards meet the, the square, he said, the guards go by it. And the time the next two guards came around, that corner tent was gone, you know? The, wow. the people steal it. Yeah, they, they stole it, right? <laughs> so what? He, so we had to increase the patrol. Yeah, he said those buggers took down a tent in two and a half minutes. It took us two and a half bloody days to take it up, and they took it down in two and a half. Just minutes. Took all the pegs and just ran away. So so I got to I got to find out who they are so they can we can hire them to put the tents up. You know, <laughs> and he kind of joked about it, but it was a big problem back then. Eh? Yeah. But that's one of the stories. But he didn't really talk about anything. You know. I would say 
um, I don't know, violent or something like that. It was all those good memories and stuff like that. And he got offered a job in Israel to be the postmaster. Really? Yeah, I mean, in the Gaza Strip. Can you imagine that now? Yeah, that would be <laughs> massive. Yeah, They've been be fighting tough. since 1948. Yeah. You, know? Uh, you know, he'd been a postmaster there. But uh, but he turned it down, obviously, and, and we were born in England instead of Gaza. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine that? But he, he did get stationed in... Uh, in Africa, I know mm. that for a period of time because wow. he told me about that. Yeah. Um, other than that, I really, my Uncle Ted and him were buddies. I, mean, I was gonna say, I think yeah. Auntie Sandra told me a story where yeah. how they met. I think he his plane went down and yeah. her dad parachuted or something like my that. My dad was paratrooper and then found him. You know, they were yeah. injured and stuff, and they become best of buddies and married his sister. <laughs> yeah. I just couldn't imagine. Yeah, so that you know that this goes to show, yeah. and his sister looks. Uh, looked like that. They were, you knew they were brother and sister. Yeah. Right? So it was kind of cool that way. But that's how they met. And Uncle Ted, uh, you know, honored my dad. I mean, it was his, he saved his ass a few times. Oh, he yeah. told me a couple of stories that, because my dad was the sergeant, you know, he's, because uh, they run the ambulances and Ted used to, you know, I'm not going to say screw up, but, yeah. but my dad used to cover his butt and, and Ted never forgot it. And, yeah. you know, they were best of buddies. So having a big move from, you know, to England to here, leaving all that behind like you know his brothers and sisters and family man that's that's even his parents like you know that's a big bold move right yeah. but he wasn't thinking of them he was thinking of us like yeah. the kids right his so, future right you know and an egg and wife i think sure come into respect <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't say too much to me but i remember one time he told me he slept in a wheelbarrow and christmas really <laughs> and, yeah and he okay. says to me a big russian guy picked him up and grabbed him and told him Merry Christmas and put him back in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh my God. That must have been so scary. Another, yeah. And then there was another time because he was a paramedic and he went to a plane because he heard people banging on the plane. He went in there to save him. And that's when he met Uncle Ted. You remember Uncle Ted? Yeah. He, got, he brought him out and a couple of other guys, but he's best friend died patty he, he died he told me he brought ted home and that's how he met his sister joan and that's why they got together and got married and that, that's why uncle ted was in the family because my dad brought him home oh my gosh i did yeah. not know that you didn't know that no no so was it like a like a down plane and he kind of went in yeah, and, he, and saved yeah he crashed he was down and he heard knock banging on the on the walls to get out because they were stuck in there right so um, that was another one he told me about. Um, I think that's... I know there was a few more, but I just can't remember. But them two kept in my mind for some reason. Yeah? And, uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, my dad never liked talking about the war too much. You know? Every time I used to ask him little questions, sometimes he'd say little bits, and other times he'd go, I'd rather not talk about it. I guess it brought back memories. Because I know he was very hurt when his friend got killed, Patty. Mm -hmm. He was very close to this guy named Patty. I've never seen him. I don't know what he looks like, but I guess in the, I guess uh, one of the pictures, I guess when they're all in a group, I think he's in there, but I don't know which one. Really? You know, I know you said he's a paratrooper. Yeah. yeah, that's the and one. And he served in Africa. Yeah, he was in Africa. Wow. Yeah, he was telling us. Yeah, with Uncle. Ted. That's where he was with Uncle Ted, and he said it was rough. Well, he told, like, different things he told us, like I heard, and he said when they jumped, they had no water, right? So they was drinking, you know, I didn't want to say that one. <laughs> Just dirty water? Oh, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He, he didn't really talk about it. I think Sandra's got mostly all his service stuff. Uh, yeah, they I was fortunate enough to, to see his medals it, it, and Yeah, she's got photos. collected all that. She yeah. collected all that. But uh, I only knew it from, like, Dad and Ted talking about it. That's how we, I knew different things, but we really didn't go right into it. I know his brother was in in the in the army too, but they they pulled him out. Yeah. Yeah. His mum. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His mum weren't a breakdown. So Oh wow. Yeah, really bad. Severe. So they pulled him out of the army. Oh you're so back. tough. So tough. It's tough. It was. Because well, he was only eighteen. Yeah. When he went in, right? Yeah. Yeah. So young. Yeah. So well they all were young. <laughs> That's what they call me sometimes when I was younger, yeah. because when all the kids were babies and little, I used to be careful with them. I always used to, but you know, like I had to sort of step back. 
but that's why they used to sort of the nickname. Why, yeah, but my dad was a paratrooper. Okay. Um, the only time he ever landed in a plane was when he came to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you didn't know that. Yeah. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're saying he enlisted when he was eighteen? I believe so. Yeah, because. The reason, you know, I'm kind of doing this whole like little documentary because he would have turned 100 this year. Yes. This October. So, yeah. you know, like whatever, quick math. I, World War II started in 1939. I believe he enlisted. So he would have been, I guess, 18, right? Yeah. But, yeah, because uh, yeah. the, war, the war finished in 45. I 45, say. yeah. Yeah. Because I asked Peter. Peter's a history buff. Oh, yeah. He didn't talk about his experiences at all. I think there were two horrifying or too horrific mm. the only one that used to talk about the war was my uncle ted because that was dad's partner they used they went through the war together and that's how dad brought uncle ted home and that's how he married his sister on to kind of his military background yes. i was 1921 he was born so yes 39 would he have been was, the start he, that's when he was 18 so he would have went october so yeah. he got called up then mm -hmm. Yeah, and so he stayed right through the six years. Wow. And um, stationed uh, all over. And um, yeah, it was tough. And uh, he was a sergeant in the army and a paratrooper towards the end. Unfortunately, I didn't understand as a child, right, to listen to the stories. And mm. it was sad that we didn't pay a lot of attention when we got older, really, yeah. you know. Um, but he did sometimes talk about it, but not a lot, because I think sometimes the memories are not very good memories, yeah. right? Because I do know that he saved Uncle Ted because he was downed in a plane, and Dad parachuted in for him. That's how Dad met Uncle Ted. Really? He married, he introduced him to his sister Joan, that's how they got married. Um, he was stationed in Europe, and, and, and of course he witnessed all the, um, uh, all the massacre of the Jewish people yeah. that were buried all in there. Like yeah. the, you know, some things are not very nice. And also, when they had to go through across to Africa, he said that was very tough. He said they weren't very nice people. And of course, me, I said, well, we were invading their country, right? They didn't know that, mm -hmm. right? But at the same time, it was to save the rest of Europe too, right? So, you know... Um, so yeah, so I'm sure there weren't some, he lost a lot of mates there, but, uh, so I'm sure it was, um, no easy feat, um, for him, but, uh, so never really spoke about it, and mm -hmm. I'm glad that, you know, with all this PSDT that they have today. I couldn't imagine what yeah, he went through, really. It just he, wasn't as known yeah. about as, like, shell shock. It wasn't, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was and a little I'm bit. Sure. 18 years old, you know. Yeah, yeah it's so it's young. I could, no youth, yeah. right? Yeah. His youth was taken away from him, mm -hmm. I felt, and didn't know that. So I'm thankful that he felt that we needed to have a decent life and a youth, and I think mm -hmm. that was important for him. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, a, a brave soul, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And as you can see, the... I was going to say, do you want to yeah. grab them and put them all over? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Put those in, yeah. You might want to, yeah. yeah. So, do you want to put them in, in between your eyes? So yeah, there, get a little closer, yeah. yeah. And as you can see, mum was in the land army there, mm -hmm. that she was here. That's her certificate of photo and her badge at the bottom, yeah. And then dad was a paratrooper there, which I've got to put in there. I haven't got his paratroop thing in there because I can't find it, but that's the original box that all the medals were given to him. Wow. And um, there's his blazer badge, that's his cap badge, I believe. And there are all his medals, and that represents where he served. Wow. Like going into the war, number one, wasn't it, Han? Can you read them? And this one's Africa. Yeah, the African star. Mm -hmm. And the other one's that's Germany. Germany wow. star. And these are. Oh, yeah. Gosh. I think Did where they served, yeah. yeah, they just because you served, and I think that extended uh, a year after the war, as I said, to um, get that. So that's where they all are. Wow. Yeah. And it does tell you on the back what they are, and on the back of that picture, it tells you about Dad of what unit he was in and and everything. So him his number, but unfortunately I haven't memorized that. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. I should have photocopied it, um, you know, mm -hmm. footage of it before I got in there, but. Wow. But yeah, so yeah.
That's quite amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you did six year full full six years, yes, and then did, yeah. and then one extra year, yes. uh, and, then and then came, came out and got married. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Another family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you. Um, we were talking about like kind of what he valued most and family and, and stuff like that. You know what? What kind of legacy do you think? You know, nanny and granddad kind of left. Yeah, you know? his Obviously, family was very important, yeah. and uh, we always used to gather together. You know, there's one there way back when. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the hairstyles I absolutely <laughs> yeah. love. <laughs> yeah, it family we met, my mom, we my always <laughs> got together at Christmas and functions. Yeah. And, uh, of course, there's him celebrating one of his birthdays there, although that was later. Yeah. But, uh, we always got together, and um, I think um, that was his most probably what he valued. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I think what I've brought out of it is family is important. Yeah. Um, what I think we were taught was work ethics, mm -hmm. and and mum kind of taught us uh, with dad independence, like to, yeah. you know, to work hard and and uh, get. You know where you want to be, mm -hmm. I suppose, right? Don't, don't let anybody push you around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, that exactly. Your mom, that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. nanny doesn't take anything from anyone, <laughs> no, no. especially even at ninety-two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's him as a little boy there. Oh wow! It's the one I found. Yeah. Yeah, these old photos are amazing. I don't know if it says the the year. No. Yeah. Wow. And this is what I wanted to represent as family. That was Absolutely. when his brother, uh, our Uncle Brian, got married. Uncle Brian, And we yeah. were all invited to the wedding. Wow. You know, that was that was really a super day. And my Aunt Hilda made all our dresses. Winnie did the embroidery, my Auntie Wynn and Auntie Barbara made all the cardigans and I think I'm the only one that's wearing it <laughs> I was always cold it seems oh my goodness that's and do you do you remember when I guess when what year was that I can look to see the age of us yeah. there um I should have found that out before and our packs there and um so mm, so Pat was born in 56 so um so it must have been around late late 50s yeah yeah you know 60 because Anthony's not there, but then they wouldn't have taken him as a baby. No. I've got a feeling Mrs. Hubbard would have taken care of him. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all the family. You saw that mum, look at her hat. Did you see her hat? No, I didn't. On the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, His brother was much taller than him, as you can see. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. He got the shorter genes in the family. <laughs> and what kind of um, like legacy do you think they, they kind of left? Obviously having eight kids, quite a lot of uh, kids and obviously grandkids, but um, yeah, even mean, both of them, like nanny and granddad. Yeah, they, the legacy is the opportunities we had here. I mean, I can see it now that I'm older. Yeah. I'm not saying England's bad or nothing like that, but England was populated. I mean, we come here of the, like, the land of opportunity. Yeah. And I think, looking at my brothers and sisters, they've done all well. I'm not saying they couldn't have done back then, but I mean, uh, and I think the weather was great. <laughs> yeah. The tree is still yeah, growing. It's tough, and then the tree is still growing. Like, you know, it's like a big oak tree, eh? and it just keeps on going up and up and out and out. It's unbelievable. But uh, no, they proved a lot how to, you can survive. There's no reason why you can't survive. Like, we did it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't make it that way. And we just never gave up. None of us did, I don't think. Sure, we had ups and downs and stuff like that, but everything, even to today, we used to have family gatherings. We always try and get together. You don't find that in big families anymore. They always seem to branch off and then you don't see them no more. Yeah. And maybe phone calls now and again, but we still try to get together, which, we, which you know, right? So, but family orientation, I think that's what they, my, my parents taught me. Yeah. Make sure family comes first. Yeah. I, think that, I think they came over here because for, for us, I think. They did it for us. I think to have a little bit better life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. More opportunities. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The legacy for them too uh, was, um, you know, be there for one another, for your partners, when it's rough or not, you know, like, uh, and all right, so you've got a lot of kids, but you work with it. I mean, dad used to come home at midnight or two o'clock in the morning. He used to make up all the baby's bottles for my mum. <laughs> it's over, oh, we got over a hundred of us now. I oh, think so. Smokes. Yeah. That's, that's incredible. That's really amazing, actually. 
it'd be kind of, be nice to see what goes on down the road in another 20 years from now. I'd be, I hope I'm still around to see all of it. Yeah. I hope I am. I want to see most of the grandchildren married and got kids. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be 41, so I mean, I'm hopefully... Oh, you better be married and have kids. <laughs> if, it was, if it was Maddie's choice, we'd be married right now. Oh, would you? <laughs> well, I think Nanny and Granny's legacy is to work hard and work together. They always made sure everything was paid for. We always had a warm home and clothes and food. Um, and Annie also used to foster like two to four children oh, right. as well. You can show this photo, like this one was. Yeah, that's was right. It, was it Christmas or that Thanksgiving? That was pancakes. No, that's Shrove Tuesday. Oh wow! Mom's okay. Making all pancakes there for us. That yeah. was in the paper. Actually. That was in the newspaper. Really? The local local newspaper. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. I was gonna say, can you can you name every everyone in the photo? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool. Yes, that obviously mum and dad. There's Teresa. Yeah. Jan, Jan. There's me. Jillian, Andrew, Pat, and Anthony. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, unfortunately, Lisa wasn't born. Yeah. 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 So when do you think that was? It was early, is it well, early 60s? Well, if Anthony was only a baby, it was 1960. 1960, yeah. wow. Bruce most about Little Canada, like what did he enjoy most about? He said the seasons and stuff like that. Yeah. He's he, a big, big hockey fan. He's a big hockey fan. Yeah, I loved hockey. I, I just think that grand dad granddad really embraced uh the canadian culture he just loved canada and believe it or not he never became a canadian citizen what yeah what do you mean yeah he never did i mean i guess back then you know like nanny granddad that. never did and i mean nanny just did not too long ago right wow. <laughs> so but he loved canada he loved all the seasons he yeah. he liked the changing of the weather and um he was a pr very proud to live here like canada day was a big thing for him too um, I mean, he left his mom and dad and all his brothers and sisters and families, but he knew the opportunity was to be here. Mm -hmm. So he really adjusted here. <laughs> so how old he would have been when, uh, I guess, Sarah and me were born? He would have been his late 70s, early 80s? Yes, yeah. He was 78 when you were born. 70, yeah, 78. And uh, 75 when Sarah was born. Yeah. The last of the, the grandchildren. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then Niles was born after you. Because yeah. I said, oh, when I told him that you were going to be born, I said, how about, I said, Dad, how would you like to make a round number of 20 grandchildren? Because <laughs> you were the 20th. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So, and then <laughs> the 20th. 20th grandchild, and then Niles was 21. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, he was pretty happy about that. Yeah, he, he really adored you and Sarah. He spent a lot of time with us when you guys were little. Um, you got Nanny and Granddad were always over and looking after you guys or playing with you. Uh, Sarah always was with him and having little cups of tea and sitting, playing tea with him and sitting on his lap or, yeah, yeah or playing games. She liked to do that. And uh, he always had a hard time saying your name. So instead of saying Zachary, he would say, how's my boy? He always <laughs> took say, my boy, how's my boy? Yeah. <laughs> or oh, come on boy, like come on. <laughs> yeah, or just call you Zach, but yeah. yeah. So I, it's funny because I see a lot of him in you because of music and uh, just your personality and stuff like that, so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. My big ass ears. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh no, well, yeah, I guess granddad has big ears. <laughs> he has big floppy ears, come on. Sounds yeah, good. Was that about all the questions that we had? For, I think so. Yeah. Where is this? <laughs> You're the last one. <laughs> You're the little baby of the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, cool. How all was right. that? Wonderful. <laughs> so, Mum. What's your first and last name? My name? Yeah. Talk to the camera. Ali, Alice Louise Williams. Yeah. yeah. And where and when were you born? I was born September the 7th, 1927. Yeah, and where, where was you born? In London, England. I want to know. What kind of man was Grandad? My, my John? Yeah. Oh, he was a wonderful man. Wonderful. And I'm sorry that he went and left me. 
There we go. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> doing a whole oh lot. dear. How are you? Oh, I'm in the I'm in the green now. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, and he look nice, didn't he? <laughs> I just finished uh, one of my exams, so it's, uh, it's good to hear from you. You finished your exams? So what? I know, on a, on a Saturday, can you believe it? Wow. You yeah, I know. You're at school, are you? Yeah, in the morning, 10 a.m. on a Saturday. Who does that? Uh, nobody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs>